So the Windows 10 Fall Creators update is now upon us and I can finally go over what I think are the coolest features and show you guys as well. So there was obviously a ton of stuff they updated, a lot of little stuff, some major stuff that I'll of course mention, but we're gonna do a mixture of the two. So why don't we just jump right in, I'll show you some of the stuff that I think is really neat, maybe you didn't necessarily hear about already, as well as the big things as well, like I just said. Let's go. I should say that if you do wanna download this now, it should be available if you go to the automatic update panel, but if it's not or it's not working, you can also go and download the media creation kit off Microsoft's website and install it manually that way. Me personally, unless you really want some of these features, I'd probably just wait till it automatically rolls out, especially since sometimes you know, these updates are a little bit buggy. So I wouldn't necessarily install this before you have to, I just wanted to show you guys. One example that I can help you with, maybe you have the same problem that I did when I first installed this. For some reason, my internet wasn't working. As soon as I restarted after the update, it said network connection wasn't connecting to the internet, I was thinking, what the heck is this? Turns out, for some reason, the update disabled IPv4 in my network adapter. So if that happens to you, you update and you don't get an internet connection, check your network adapter settings and see if it disabled IPv4. That could be the issue. But anyway, let's get into the actual features. So one of the big things Microsoft has been pushing for a while now and developing is mixed reality. So this is kind of like virtual reality, except the idea is that, you know, it's a combination of reality and what they're gonna show you virtually. It's like augmented reality, basically. And it's gonna be built into Windows, almost like a virtual desktop that you live in. So they integrated this into the main system before it was developer only, and now there should be a whole new panel in the settings. So you can actually get some of the Windows 10 mixed reality headsets. I actually have one, let me get it. This is what it looks like. This is one made by Acer. There's another one made by HP, I believe, and probably a lot of other uh, manufacturers coming out. So you just stick this on your head, and it's basically a virtual reality headset. It's got cameras on the front, and it kind of detects the surroundings, a lot like HoloLens, except this is tethered, and I have HoloLens as well, and I couldn't really get this to work very well. So I was trying to make videos about it. I'm hoping that they fixed it in this new update, and I'll eventually be able to make a video about it, but this is what they're expecting you to use eventually. It's only about 300 bucks, and should be exciting if they do get it to work. One of the other features that Microsoft has really been touting as a big improvement is the People's Panel that is now available in the taskbar. I don't think it's that exciting personally, but the idea is now you can just click this little icon in the taskbar and it'll bring up a menu where you can connect all sorts of different services like your mail, your, I don't know, Xbox, Skype, um, there's no more MS Messenger is there, whatever they use, and you can now interact with all those people under one umbrella. So I don't really use anything that's Microsoft based I just use email pretty much and maybe like Steam, but I don't think it supports that. So if you do wanna disable this, you can actually just right click it and uncheck the box that shows the people button and then you don't have to see it. But maybe if you do use a lot of those services, you can now just contact people right through there. For those of you who use Microsoft Edge, the browser, this is a pretty cool feature, which is you can now actually pin websites to the taskbar. So if you go to a website, you now just click on the little settings menu and then click pin this to the taskbar. And now in the quick launch icons, along with the programs you might have there, there is a link directly to the website and it'll show the favicon for that. So it's unfortunate that you can't do this with the default browser, like I just use Chrome, but I guess if you do use Edge, this is something neat. Or maybe if it's a website where it doesn't really matter what browser you use, you're just checking to see an update on something, you could put it there if you don't care about what it opens in. Next up, this one's gonna be kind of mixed reaction, I think, but there's a new emoji keyboard that is easily accessible through a Windows shortcut. So now if you press either Windows plus period or the Windows key plus semicolon, it'll bring up the emoji keyboard with the new Unicode emojis. So now if you're typing into any text box on any website or even email, and you wanna put in an emoji, you no longer have to, I don't know, go to the Google and search for the emoji and copy and paste. It should just appear in that keyboard, so it's pretty easy. 
All right, this next feature is good for people who use headphones and it is the Windows Spatial Sound feature. So now what you do is you right click on the sound icon in the taskbar and it'll show you the option to enable Windows Spatial Sound for your sound device. And when you enable this, it basically does a virtual surround sound, kind of like Dolby Atmos, but apparently this actually works a little bit better than Dolby Atmos, especially since it's just built into Windows, it's natively supported. And uh, I don't think this would probably be ideal for listening to music and definitely not if you're using regular speakers, but maybe if you're playing video games where you're wearing headphones and it supports 3D audio, this would be something you might want to try out because it basically uses the surround sound audio that the program will generate and then uses an algorithm to put it into stereo to speakers in a way that will sound like it is actually in 3D. There's some new algorithms coming out, especially like I just mentioned, Dolby Atmos, and this is a new technology that it might actually work pretty well depending on what you're playing it with. Speaking of gaming, here's another cool one that is kind of related to that. You know in the taskbar there's a performance tab and it shows different resources that are being used like CPU, memory, that sort of thing. Well now there is a new section for GPU, for your graphics card, which is actually pretty surprising in that it has a lot of different statistics that I wouldn't have expected. For example, not just overall usage, but also what specific type of process is using up the resources, such as 3D programs. So it's, it'll show you how much of the GPU's process is going towards 3D rendering, as well as video encoding and decoding. So if your GPU has a lot of resources being used for some reason, you're trying to figure out why, you might be able to get a hint that way. If it says video encoding is using it all up, well, maybe what programs would do that? Or what programs would be using 3D rendering? And that would be able to give you a better idea. Another general feature Microsoft introduced in this new update is the Fluent Design. So this is a set of new design principles. Most of this is very minor, very subtle, such as if you open certain native Microsoft apps, it has the acrylic effect. So you know the arrow design where it kind of blurs the background of anything behind the window? It's very similar to that. So if you scroll the window over something, it'll kind of blur what's behind it and almost look like a frosted glass effect. I kind of like it, it's very subtle, not much different from the arrow effect, but if you like that sort of thing, it's pretty cool. Here's another feature that kind of goes with the creator's update feature, is the Photos app, funny enough, can now make videos with the Story Remix feature, and you can actually use different effects that can be applied automatically to a video, and it can even do stuff like motion tracking to track a certain object and apply that effect to that thing and follow it around the video. So I actually tried this out and you might have seen my 300K special a long time ago. I just did a goofy video. And you can see here, I actually applied this tracking effect, like an atomic, I don't know what it is, but anyway, it actually tracks me pretty darn well. I was surprised. Normally for something like this, you have to use like uh, Adobe After Effects and you'd have to do a whole bunch of uh, motion tracking. You'd have to specifically set what you want to track, set the range. And this seems to do literally just as good a job almost for what the purpose is with no work at all. So I think if you want to get into very basic video editing, you just don't want to do something quick like a home movie, this is something that is definitely at least worth looking at if you don't want to spend a bunch of time learning After Effects. It's actually pretty neat. For those of you who use Microsoft OneDrive, there's a cool new feature that allows you to see what files are in the drive without actually storing those files. It's called Files On Demand. So the idea is even if you open up your OneDrive folder and you have some files in the cloud but they're not actually on your computer, they'll still show up as an icon and if you want to access that file, you double click it and it would ideally quickly download that file and open it up so you don't have to keep all these files stored on your computer. Now the one thing I'm kind of wondering about is what's really the utility for this unless you have like almost no storage on your computer because if it's a file that is so small that it's worth just downloading whenever you need it, well then what's the point of not just having it on your hard drive if it doesn't take up that much space anyway? I don't know, maybe for if you have a, just a ton of smaller files that do add up to a lot of data, 
this could be useful, but I don't really see it being that super useful for me. Here's another gaming feature that I haven't really seen too many people talking about, and that is a new feature called True Play. And it's actually an anti-cheat client. So this is very interesting because you know how there's all sorts of anti-cheat clients like was it Fair Play for Battlefield, Punk Buster was the old one, is that even still around? You have, um, you have VAC for Valve and all of these try to do their best to detect cheaters in their respective games and now Microsoft has actually put a native anti-cheat into the operating system. And I think what's most notable about this is because a lot of times like with VAC for example, they, they're very limited in what they can do because they don't want root access to the operating systems for a lot of reasons, mostly privacy. A lot of people wouldn't like that. But now, if there is a native anti-cheat that's built into the operating system, that would presumably have very, very low level access to everything going on in the computer, and you know it's secure, it's legit, because it's literally from Microsoft built in. So I wouldn't be surprised if we started seeing certain games start to adopt this anti-cheat, maybe even in addition to the current one in their games, and this might make people think twice about cheating if they know that you know it's built right into their operating system. And of course, it does say if you disable this feature, you might not be able to play certain games, obviously. All right, now finally, Windows 10 has introduced a bunch of new settings for phone settings in the settings panel. And this is gonna introduce a bunch of new features, more specifically in having to do with syncing your iOS or Android device with your Windows 10 device, whether it's a desktop or a laptop or a tablet. So for example, if you're working on something on your Android or iOS device, you can now continue where you left off on the desktop and maybe show notifications between your phone, desktop, and that sort of thing. Me personally, I don't know if I'm gonna use this. I don't really need to sync my notifications on my desktop. I mostly just get them on my phone and I don't even use Cortana. I don't really trust it to be honest but maybe if you do use your phone a lot with your Windows 10 device, this is something good to look at. It's just settings and then phone settings. So that's about it. Those are just a bunch of the features that I thought were the coolest or most notable. Obviously there's a ton more that you can check out. I'm sure there's other websites that'll give you the nitty gritty about every little detail that was changed, but I thought those were the ones you guys would think is most interesting. If you guys wanna keep watching, I'll put some other videos right here. You can just click on those. And if you wanna subscribe, I make new videos a few times a week and also consider enabling notifications by clicking the bell next to the subscribe button or YouTube might not show you new videos at all. Again, I'm looking forward to hearing from you guys. So thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Have a good one.